Hey, Bill, where are you? I'm on the other side of the kitchen. Oh, there you are. All right. So everybody, uh, my name is Steve Cavallaris from electricaltime.com. Last week, we did this video, the same exact video on this island in this kitchen. And we got Bill. This is Bill's house. Bill is uh, letting us use his house so that we can do these videos for our electrical students. And who's an electrical student, Bill? Who do you think? Everybody. Everybody. So it can be the helper, it can be the apprentice, it could be the journeyman, it could be the master electrician, right? It can even be the authority having jurisdiction. You know, we're all students, we're always learning. So even if you're a master electrician, you know, we hope that you get something out of this video and all the other videos that we do because we always have to keep on learning as the electricians. We got the toughest job, but you know what? It's the best job. There's so much knowledge that we got to have. So we're going to be talking about this in the 2020 National Electrical Code. Now, depending on where you're doing your work, you might be on the 2014 code. You might be on the 2017 code. You might be on the 2020 code. You might be on the 2023 code. And you know what? The code's always changing, so you got to know the code. All right, so Bill, um, got a beautiful kitchen here. I know in the other video, we did the measurement and it's about 34 square feet. It's a nice size island. And we got some expensive countertop here. What is this? This is quartz, yes. right? Yes. Okay, and we estimated that this island here is about at least a thousand pounds of weight and then bill you reinforce this so that it could be extra strong yes all right so we're going to look in our code book now we're going to look at 210.52 c2 now repeat that that's 210.52 c2 and for the 2020 code that's a new section that they added and it's called island and peninsula countertops and work surfaces and here's what it says it says receptacle outlets. Bill, what do you think a receptacle outlet is? A receptacle outlet is the box. I the, learned that. He got, oh boy, all oh right, Bill. I learned it, the box. The box. So the receptacle outlet is the box. And then what goes inside that receptacle outlet? The receptacle. The receptacle, the device itself. All right, excellent. So when you're reading the code book, it might talk about receptacle outlets. It might talk about receptacles. Just remember, the receptacle outlets, the box. And the receptacle is what's going to go inside that receptacle outlet box. Good, though. All right. So it says here, uh, receptacle outlets shall be installed in accordance with 210.52C2A and C2B. So let's read A. A says, at least one receptacle outlet shall be provided for the first nine square feet or fraction thereof of the countertop or work surface. It continues to say, a receptacle outlet shall be provided for every additional 18 square feet or fraction thereof of the countertop or work surface. Remember when we did the 2017? Yes. It was completely different. Yes, it was. Now they changed it. I mean, it's a really significant change and you really got to read this very well. All right, so, so for the first nine square feet, right? We got to have a receptacle outlet, right? And when we measured this, this is approximately 34 square feet. So when we take the 34 square feet minus the nine square feet, we have 25 square feet left over. So what do you do now with this 25 square feet? And let's read the second sentence again. It says, a receptacle outlet shall be provided for every additional 18 square feet or fraction thereof of the countertop or work surface. So that means if I have an additional 19 square feet after I subtracted my first nine square feet, that means I gotta put in now two receptacle outlets in addition to my first one for the first nine square feet. Is that, does that sound, does that make sense to you, Bill? I guess if you have a lot of working room uh, and you plug in a lot of things, yeah, you would need more outlets. Could you imagine, 
you know, somebody not paying attention to this crazy change that happened in 2020 and wait till we get to the 2023 code, it changed again. Could you imagine somebody not following these exact rules? I wouldn't want to have to hit this cut again. Right, it could be a real big headache. So make sure you know what cycle of the code that you're on. Okay, so we start with the 34 square feet. The first nine square feet, we have to have a receptacle outlet. So when we take 34 minus nine, we come up with 25 square feet. So here's what you do. Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what Steve's gonna do. Take that 25 square feet, divide it by 18 square feet, and we end up with 1.4. Now, Bill, can I put 1.4 receptacle outlets? No. I have to install an additional two because it says fraction thereof. So under this crazy 2020 rule, and thank you for whoever who did this, making everybody absolutely nuts, we got to have three receptacle outlets serving this island. Okay, so let's continue. It gets even more crazy. Uh, we're going to be looking at B. It says at least one receptacle outlet shall be located within two feet of the outer end of the peninsula countertop or work surface. Okay, so what we got to do, we've got three receptacle outlets so far that we have to install for this island. And it says, and I'll read this again, at least one receptacle outlet shall be located within two feet of the outer end of the peninsula countertop or work surface. Okay, so is this a peninsula countertop or work surface? This is an island. This is an island. This is not a peninsula. Okay, it's not a peninsula. But when we read 210.52C2, it's titled Island and Peninsula Countertops and Work Surfaces. And here's the way that I'm understanding this when I read B. It says at least one receptacle outlet shall be located within two feet of the outer end of a peninsula countertop or work surface. So does that mean that we have to put a receptacle outlet over here within two feet of the end of this island? What do you think, Bill? I don't think we have to. I don't think we have to either based on the exact wording of this. All right, so let's continue to read this and continue to be confused. All right, and it says, additional required receptacle outlets shall be permitted to be located as determined by the installer, designer, or building owner. Isn't that nice that they're letting you as the building owner decide if you want to have additional receptacles? Yeah, that's nice. That's nice, right? They're yeah. not saying that you can't, but that you can. All right, so the... Location of the receptacle outlet shall be in accordance with 210.52C3. Okay, so for those of you that have to follow the 2020 code for this, it's confusing. So you're going to have to really read it, make sure that you really understand it so that you don't get in trouble with the electrical inspector. All right, so now we're going to look at 210.52C3, and that's called receptacle outlet location. So, Bill, we just can't put these receptacle outlets anywhere we want, right? We have to put them in certain locations. So, make sure that you understand those locations per 210.52C3. And here they are. Number one, on or above countertop or work surface. On or above, but not more than 20 inches above the countertop or work surface. Now, obviously, right, we can't really put a receptacle outlet over here because there's nothing here, right? But let's say like we've got the sink behind you and we've got that wall over there. So let's say there were no cabinets above there, right? You couldn't just put a receptacle outlet anywhere you'd want, say, hey, I want that three feet off of the countertop. No, you can't do that. The maximum that it could be would be 20 inches above the countertop. But usually what we do what I did when I was doing the installations, and I'll go over here by the kitchen countertop. I would find out what the height is of this countertop. I'd find out what the height is. 36 inches. 36 inches, okay. 
then I would say, are you going to have any kind of backsplash against the wall? Yes, yes or no? we did. Okay. Well, we, we do. We have full courts. Okay. So you need to find out what's going to be there. Because if you don't, what can happen? I mean, it could really be a big mistake. Let's say against that wall, they have, let's say, a six-inch piece of marble for the backsplash. And you put your receptacle outlet boxes, usually where you put them, let's say at 48 inches to the top, without talking to the homeowner or to the builder or to the designer. Now, they're, they're, they're putting in that backsplash and your box is right there, like where the backsplash is. So how do you fix that? I mean, it's really a, like a stupid mistake and there's really no real way to fix it. You know, the kitchen installer they're not going to be carving a big hole into that six inch backslash. They're going to say, hey, you come and you move your box, but the sheetrock's already installed. So be careful about that. So that's a real big problem. And I've seen this happen on jobs. And ultimately, it's going to be the electrician, most likely, who is going to have to fix that mistake. All right. So that's a piece of advice from Steve. Well, as a retired contractor, I have noticed and seen houses where they just cut out the top piece and it would stick up and it... It would just, it would just look like... It was half on the backsplash and half in the air. I'm going to say something. It would look like crap if you did that. And it would show that you're not a professional electrician because you did not coordinate with the homeowner, with the builder. All right, so let's continue on with 210.52C32. And it says, in countertop or work surfaces, receptacle outlet assemblies listed for use in countertops or work surfaces shall be permitted to be installed in countertops or work surfaces. So, Bill, that's a lot of fancy language in there. So, really what they're talking about, they're talking about those pop-ups that you push down on them, and then they pop up, and then you got your receptacles, right? And that, that, that's a listed assembly that's listed for this purpose, you know, for this countertop, because there's going to be water here. So you can't just make up something like in your garage, say, oh, here, I'm going to, I'm going to cut a hole in this piece of quartz that might cost three or $4,000. Don't even think about doing that. Call the kitchen people to make the hole, but double check something. We got drawers, right? And that drawer is probably going to end someplace over here. Let's say the homeowner says, well, I want to have a pop-up right here. But when you take your ruler and you measure, you say, oh, the drawer's in the way. So you got to find out what's behind here in Same. the cabinet, right? Yeah, you just make... like this. If there was another drawer on the There's other side. There's another drawer over there. Check that out. So, so the drawers come close to the back. There's not much room in between. There's not much room. So make sure that you know that wherever that hole is going to be uh, you know, drilled out, hopefully by the kitchen people who did this countertop, that they're doing that. And all you're doing as electrician, you're putting that in there, and then you are connecting that branch circuit. Don't even think, and this is my suggestion, don't even think about taking your old hole saw that's all beat up, even if it has a carbide bit on it, and try to drill into this three or $4,000 countertop. That could cost you a real big problem if you have to replace that. All right, that's a huge tip, Bill. Also, number three, below countertop or work surfaces, not more than 12 inches below the countertop or work surface, receptacles installed below a countertop or work surface shall not be located where the countertop or work surface extends more than six inches beyond its support base. All right, so let's go over here to the edge. All right. So really what they're talking about here, we've got this countertop. And if we measure from the edge of the countertop to the base, it's about one inch. But let's say it extends six inches out. Bill, what do you think? Can I still put a receptacle outlet here on the side if this countertop extends six inches from its base? Six inches, yes. Anything more, no. Anything more, no. So if you're going to measure let's say and you got six and a half or seven inches and you're going to use that as one of the required receptacle outlets for this island. 
then guess what? You, can't, you cannot count it as one of the required outlets. But, Bill, do you think if you wanted to add some more receptacle out outlets, that you can still put one here on the side if it, if it wasn't required? If it wasn't required, if I wanted one, I could, I could put one in. Sure. There's nothing saying that you can't. But be careful. In the 2023 NEC, it now became illegal to put that receptacle outlet on the side of the cabinet. Right? And we did this so that little kids stopped to get hurt. That's correct. And actually, Bill's... My grandson pulled a hot tea kettle off because the plug was on the end of a counter in their house. Yeah, so this is a real problem. So I don't suggest, Bill doesn't suggest, don't put those receptacle outlets here on the side because little kids can pull on them and it could be a really bad day. One more paragraph. It says, receptacle outlets rendered not readily accessible by appliances fastened in place, appliance garages, sinks, <clears throat> or range tops is covered by 210.52C1 exception or appliances occupying assigned spaces shall not be considered as these required outlets. Okay. So in our last video, we talked about an appliance garage. Bill. Yes. Okay. Do you have the remote control for the garage door? No, I don't have a remote control. I didn't want to have to put one in. Okay. So what's an appliance garage? In case you didn't watch the video that we did on 2017 on this same section. So let's say you have a blender here that sits right here. And you have a, a box. And that box has like a door. It could be almost like a garage door. Or and a you, toaster oven in there. Well, I wouldn't put the toaster oven in there because it's going to get a lot of heat yeah. in there. I would say, personally, I would say like a blender or something that you don't want for people to see it. You just want to see a nice cabinet. Well, you can always drive it out of the garage. You could drive it out of the garage. That's true. All right. So, but let's say you have like this appliance garage for the blender over here where the door rolls up and you have your receptacle outlet for your receptacle device in there. And then you close that puppy back up. You cannot use that receptacle outlet as one of the required outlets for this island. And that's one of the things that they're talking about. All right, so Bill, I think we did a, a great job here explaining to our uh, students out there about this island for the 2020 NEC. And on behalf of electricaltime.com, my name is Steve Cavallaris. Oh, I forgot one thing, Bill. What'd you forget? I forgot, okay, go to my website electricaltime.com and you can get free NEC code questions and answers Monday through Friday. Is that cool, Bill, that I'm doing free questions and answers? That is cool. Absolutely. Go to my website and what's the name of my website, Bill? Electricaltime.com. Electricaltime.com and you click on that button. It's called the uh, NEC code questions and answers. Hey, Bill. Yeah. I forgot one thing. What's that? Do you know what time it is? It's electrical time. That's right. It's electrical time. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you on the next video.